Welcome to Elements of Community, a podcast about discovering and exploring the elements of community. I am Lucas Root, and each week we talk with a community leader about what makes their community thrive and bring value to both the leaders and the members. Join me as we unpack the magic of the elements of community. Welcome back to another episode. We have today Haley Rowe joining us. Haley is actually a friend of a very good friend of mine, Dr. Dan Sullivan, whom I got to know very well while I was living in San Diego over the last five years. Um, And when I talked to him about uh, who he might know that runs a community, that knows a thing or two about community, that is passionate about community, you, Haley, were top of his list. And over the last couple of months, you and I have gone back and forth and gotten to know each other a little bit. And I'm glad to have you here. I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much. And yeah, Dan is awesome. So that's great that you got to connect with him when you live in San Diego. He is a great guy. I I very much enjoy that friendship. Yeah. Um, Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. So I am a marketing and sales coach and consultant, and I work primarily with health, life, and mindset coaches. And I also am a LinkedIn lead gen service provider. So my whole mission is to help coaches who want to build their career and want to be able to do their craft, become actual business owners and be able to do that by acquiring clients and making their impact. Because I see a lot of individuals who become coaches and then they feel like I don't have the business savvy or Mm -hmm. I'm not a business owner. They don't see themselves that way. And so then they're not able to share their gifts because they're either coaching for free, which they can't do forever. And you know, they don't always have the time to do that or they just kind of give up. And so my whole thing is I want to help them be able to grow and become business owners and do more than they thought they could and into their career. That's awesome. Yeah. Giving up is, I see it all too often and it's a shame. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for doing what you do. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. Thank Um, you for doing what you do with community building and all of the things. My pleasure. Truly. I mean, the conversations I've had on this show have been amazing and eye-opening and life-changing. Nice. This one included. (laughs) right? Tell me a little bit about your community. Yeah. So I have a podcast that I kind of built a community around and Mm -hmm. my podcast is called Health Coach Nation. Now I used to have a Facebook group called Health Coach Nation, but sadly it got hacked and I haven't been able to get it back. So my community no longer belonged to me. (laughs) So I had to start from scratch and now my community is called the Marketing Hub on Facebook. And of course, obviously I have community all over, but It is kind of a central location where people come to connect with others who are building their business. And it's a place where you can, I've seen people become referral partners and it's just kind of a fun way to grow in your business and get tips for that, but also just meet others who are passionate about making the world either a healthier, more mentally stable or more personally developed place. So I built my community when I first, well, I've been in the coaching world for a long time. I got my first coaching certs in 2010, but in 2017, I decided to start building a community because I had been working in business development and marketing for some startups. And then I decided I want to go off on my own and have my own business and I need to you know, be around other people who are passionate about that kind of stuff. And so I started my Facebook group and I found that was a great place to have a community just because it can grow organically with the keywords you're using and things like that. And so I set that up and it started to grow organically. And we actually grew my former community to like 4,400 people. And then sadly- That's impressive. Thank you. I had to start over, but we're not where we used to be because this was kind of recent, but now I have the marketing hub group and that's been really fun. And it's interesting because I'm sure that as somebody who is into relationship building, it's really nice to see how many people 
came to the new group and you know I think it all happens for a reason and I think that the people who are meant to be there are meant to be there and so yeah it's been a fun journey so far that's cool I'm sorry about getting hacked that sucks <laughs> thank you it's all right it, yeah. it happens I like to tell people this is I mean getting hacked is is one of it but this is one of the reasons why you need to move off platform yeah yeah because well, on the good platform news is, you don't know that's so true that is so true and I did learn through that and luckily that wasn't my only platform you know so mm -hmm. I do have an email list and I do have other you know my LinkedIn and all that so I was really glad that wasn't the only place that I had been having a community because you're so right you really don't own it and it could be gone tomorrow and so that was a pretty useful lesson mm. wow yeah thank you <laughs> tell me about how the community comes together and this is actually really interesting because one of the elements of community is projects and you have had a recent example for creating a project for your community i.e move out of the old Facebook group and come into the new one because, mm -hmm. you know, disruption. Yeah. So there's been a couple things. I mean, I think this maybe is more of a general response, but I have a group called the Coach Inner Circle and it's my group coaching program. And I think that shows an example of projects or what you speak of with your leadership pillars, because in that group, a lot of the women become very close friends and they have an accountability partner and they, you know, cheer each other on and come to each other's live events or whatever they're trying to promote online. And it's mm -hmm. really nice to have people who are supporting you and people who can relate. And we have our group calls twice a week and everybody's able to be like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you said that because I was thinking that too, or I was feeling mm -hmm. really nervous about blah, 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 and it doesn't come natural to me. And so hearing you say that and get coached on that was really useful. So I would say both in my paid coaching group and in my free community, a lot of the benefit comes from when I do like lives or when they're able to connect with each other. And I also would say that I'm just, this is might be a tangent, but I'm really big on part of my main way of getting out there and the most fun way I think of marketing is collaboration. So mm -hmm. doing stuff like this, where we're having a conversation or, you know, just like supporting another business owner by sharing their post or something like that. Like there's so many things that I think we just forget that you can't build your business by yourself. And so the more you're open-minded to going into relationships with not how, what can I take or what can I get out of this, but like, how can I, how can we be useful? How can I help this person? How can I, get to know this person and that yeah. curiosity driving the way, you really can't go wrong. And a lot of fun projects will come from that. I love that. How can I be useful? You said something else in there that I really enjoy where you talked about people inside this inner circle who are showing up to each other's events. And you talked about it in terms of being supported. And, and I want to sort of level that up a little bit because it's so important to be supported and they're not just being supported, they're being supported by peers. So this inner circle is a peer network of people who are actively supporting each other, not just by showing up to the inner circle and asking questions or creating dialogue and discourse, but by showing up to each other's events mm -hmm. as a support. So they can see as a peer, the things that are being done, yes, to learn from themselves, but also to share that learning with the, the host Yeah. to say, here's a thing that I saw, here's how I handle that. Or sometimes my guess is if they really love each other and support each other, they might actually step in and just provide that service. Mm -hmm. Like they're live on the spot. That's epic community. Like that's amazing. That's when the question you asked or the statement you made is you can't build your business alone. My response to that is yes, that's true. But even if you could, why would you want to? Yeah, that's so true. It's so much richer when you have that contribution going with peer to peer and everybody together. And I even had recently like a client who was 
you know, she's in a very focused phase in her business and mm -hmm. she has a big trip coming up to Greece for three weeks with her husband and mm, was worried fun. about like, how am I, you know, what do I do with my clients? And like, how do I pause things? And I don't want to lose momentum and all this. And it was, you know, I coached her on it, but it was really nice to have somebody else on our group call who could understand because she has little kids and she's traveled too and all these things and she juggles a lot. And she just said, you're never going to get that time back and you're never going to have those three weeks in Greece ever again in your life, probably. Mm -hmm. So, you know, taking that time and appreciating it and like if, if it were me and she just kind of spoke from her own, you know, experience, like I would enjoy the heck out of that trip and not worry about all this. But it was just, you know, it's like, it's just fun because I wouldn't, you know, I have my own way of coaching her on it, but somebody else's outside perspective can always be useful too. So yeah, I think it's always more valuable when you have more than one brain. Yeah. It's not just perspective. It's, I don't know what it is, but we humans are funny. <laughs> We, we don't like receiving advice only once. And we always like to hear the same thing in a different way. Yes. Repetition. I don't know why. Like, we're funny. Like, wh why can't we learn the thing just the one time? But we don't. We just don't like hearing something only once. And we don't like to hear it in the same way twice. We want to hear it differently. And I think at different points in your life, you're ready to hear certain things and at mm. certain points in your life, you're not. So there's been times where I've listened to a podcast or something and I'm like, eh, you know, it kind of just is like in the background and nothing really stands out to me. And then I'll listen to it again, maybe later or something. And I'm like, whoa, that message <laughs> that I need to hear right now. So yeah. it is interesting. I think it's a combo of just needing repetition, but also being ready to hear the message you're meant to hear. I love that. We had a chance to talk a little bit about the elements of community. How do those show up in your community? Yeah. Well, I think the first thing that I see is purpose in my community. So mm -hmm. everybody who gets into coaching and who wants to grow as a business owner as well, we have this purpose of just growth and not just personally, but also professionally. And I think that the ripple effect of coaching is super powerful. So like by me, my clients get clients and them helping their clients. And then those clients go out into the world and they're more confident at their job or they're, you know, doing the things they want to do. I, I just think it's always this ripple effect. And I think that's a big pull of why people get into coaching and all of that. Mm -hmm. I also think that when you say value is one of your pillars, I think that's key. And I've always been the kind of person who I want to give wins ahead of time or give value ahead of time so that people are like, there's not a question of like, oh, well, is this programmer is working with her going to be useful? Yeah. So I do incorporate a lot of and when you just like i make a podcast every week i do a blog i do content i do personalized freebies like i literally that is how my business has grown to where it is because i've had so many people say oh if you do this for free i wonder what your paid stuff is like so i think yeah. just being willing to give value and not doing it from a place of like well i'm gonna give this and i expect this back but more so i'm just going to give and plant seeds and I know the harvest all shows up. It doesn't have to be in the exact way I think it needs to happen, but I know it all comes back to me, right? And mm -hmm. even if it doesn't, you're still helping people and that is part of your contribution. So I think that plays a role. I also think that when you say language, I'm curious, I mean, I hear, and I am sure this is just my marketing brain coming in, but I talk to so many coaches that their own words, I can have posts and I can have stuff out there that's like, people are like, wow, it's like you're in my head, you know? And so I think it is important to communicate with your community in their language, not what mm -hmm. you think they need, not what you would say is important, but what do they think is important? What are their dream outcomes and pain points? And making sure that when you're communicating, you're using those and not just what you feel like saying or what you think they want. And then the last thing I would say is when you say heart, I have pros and cons to this. So I actually 
When I first started my business, I was extremely attached to it. And I was extremely, like, took things very personally, would be like a little bit of a roller coaster. Like if I got a yes, I'd feel really amazing. If I got a no, I'd feel really down. And I found that connecting my heart fully with no boundaries was actually not serving my business and my community. But when I was able to see my business as like an entity that I've created and it's my contribution and it's separate from me and it's my framework and it's, you know, my way of contributing. And there is a little bit of space between that and my personal self-worth, that's when I think I can really lead with heart because I'm not dependent on, I need you to do this for me or to be happy with me and to like my stuff for me to feel good. It's more like, I'm just going to serve and, you know, I know it'll be useful to the right people and I'm not going to have this roller coaster of emotion taking me away from giving my best. Yeah. You know, because I'm just doing what I'm passionate about or I'm just following my heart. So I do have a little bit of a different view on the whole idea of like, well, just like do what you feel like and follow your passion and like, you know, that kind of thing. I think sometimes leadership and showing up for your community is not what you feel like doing that day <laughs> or there, you know, you do need to create a little space between taking rejection personally. So that's just my two cents on that one. I love that. That's awesome. So that sounds to me like you're actually bringing together the social contract in a way and heart, right? Mm -hmm. Contract could yeah. be boundaries. Contract could be, mm -hmm. this is where, this is the line. Yeah. Yeah. That's and fantastic. I, I love that. Community members should have a contract of not thinking that, because I see this a lot and I'm sure you do too. People like to ask permission to do things in their business or feel like they need to hear it from a guru or they compare their beginning to somebody else's end and they think that just because that person had that result, that's what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And I think there needs to be a social contract where it's like, no, you know, the, I'm going to take it all in I and mean, yeah. I'm going to discard what's not useful and I'm going to make it my own. Because yeah. if you're always looking to other outside sources, gurus, coaching programs, courses, I, I see them as an enhancement and yeah. they can really be useful. But sometimes people use them against themselves because they become like dependent on like, well, do I have permission to do this? Like, is this, you know, I don't want to do it wrong. And the truth is you just need to do it. And yeah, use your structure, use your support you're getting. But at the same time, if you're constantly like overthinking and needing and depending on somebody else or permission and things like that, you're not, it's going to be this never ending cycle where you're always going to need more of that. Yeah, I like it. I don't I know like if it. I went out too far. No, that was great. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I'm, and I completely agree. We, we need boundaries, not just between us and the work that we're going to do. We need boundaries between us and our expectation of ourselves. And the way you introduce that is amazing because sometimes people's expectation is I can do great things, but I can only do it when, you know, the guru tells me how. Yeah. Yeah. We need better boundaries. We need a social contract with ourselves. <sighs> For sure. Yeah, and I think the skill of resourcefulness, if anybody wants to become a leader, whether it's in their own business or leading a community or whatever, you've got to be super resourceful and you have to be able to make things your own and, you know, trust your gut in addition to <laughs> taking in information and using it as it makes sense. But at the end of the day, you do need to become somebody who can make decisions on your own and be resourceful. Yeah. Thank you. What does, what does community really mean to you? Mm. Community to me means connection and it means having something bigger than you, right? So if you think about any great person out there like Tony Robbins or anybody in our field who's crushing it, they always seem to have a movement that they're creating, not just a business, you know, offering. There's a movement and there's a, like, I guess, essence or type of person or identity shift that 
they're building around their brand. And I think community is playing a big role in that. So that's what it means to me. Yeah. I like it. That's amazing. How does that differentiate between community to you as a leader and community to you as a member? Ooh, that's a great question. I think that being a community leader means that you are listening a lot to your community members and you are holding space for everybody to have their own voice in the community and you are willing to refine and you know adapt your community as you hear that feedback versus i think when you're a member in a community it's more about you are contributing or you are sharing a little bit more so than listening and you're still listening but you don't i think the leader needs to be the one who's the most receptive and hearing what people want and need and providing that and i also think that when you're a part of a community it's about seeing I think in both cases, really, though, it's seeing about where can you bring the most value and what's your role in the community. So as a leader, your role is to, you know, coordinate everybody and let them have space to share and make it a welcoming community. But in as a member, maybe it's different. Maybe your role is you're the person who contributes a certain type of knowledge to the group or whatever your strengths are. So. I don't know if that is super sophisticated as an answer, but that's how I see the difference between the two. I like as a leader, you create the space and hold it and coordinate it, right? Yeah. And in order to do that well, you have to listen a lot. Yeah. Did I get that right? Definitely. And I agree. In order to do that well, you have to listen a lot, like a lot. <laughs> yeah. They joke that God gave you two ears and one mouth because you're supposed to listen twice as much as you speak. But Ooh. in community, I kind of argue that our eyes are our ears as well. So in that respect, we actually have four ears and still only one mouth. <laughs> well, there you go. It's a it's an interesting way of looking at it and you hit it right on the head. Like we have to listen a lot more. Yeah. And then as a member, it's about showing up. Yep. Yeah. That's where heart really starts to play, right? Show up the contract heart, bringing value. Because the members need to remember that value is a two-way street. It's not just the leader and the space that is the value. It's the members that are the value. Yeah. My, my favorite metaphor, I use it all the time, is barn raising. It doesn't matter how good a coordinator we have, the barn isn't getting raised unless a whole bunch of people are there pulling on the ropes. That's a good one. Yep. Oh. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Thank I also you. I think the leader's job is to ask the powerful questions. To ask bring, the powerful questions. Yeah, to bring some form of structure to the group or community so that it can be the best it can be versus if it's like no kind of what you, what you said before this podcast, you somewhat prepared. Like it, it will just go much further when you as the leader are prepared and coming from, you know, all right, here's our general structure and being open to adapting it. But I do think structure is also a key component. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I do. I somewhat prepare. <laughs> I, have, I mean, probably a third of the conversations I have go completely off the rails and maybe that's my most fun. Yeah. Like we start heading down a path and I'm like, this is still relevant and this is cool and I'm not going to stop. Like we're going this way and that's just what's going to happen. But, but I still have to show up with that, create the space, as you said, right. create the space. I still have to show up and create the space and then we do what we do, but I have to create the space first. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. What does leadership mean to you? To me, I actually have what I call three very important traits to successful leadership. And mm -hmm. one of them is asking solution-oriented questions. So going back to rather than yeah. you as a leader, your job is not to be 
the victim here. So I see a lot of people asking questions like, why is this so hard? Or why won't they respond? Or why, you know, those are definitely victim questions. Yes. And so what we want to shift to is like, what's right with this opportunity? Like, what can I do to make Mm. this better? What, you know, what are the strengths I have that I can bring to this community? So really anytime you catch yourself as a leader falling into blaming your members or, you know, oh, I'm just so overwhelmed or what's wrong with me, shift the question to something more open, to something more on the positive side, because our brains are wired to look for everything that's wrong. But the truth is we can flip that around if we're conscious about it. And the second thing is being willing to take massive action. So I'd take see mass- massive action. Yes. Now, I don't see massive action as hustling, burning yourself out, doing stuff just to do stuff. I see it I agree. as being willing to take action and refine as many times as you need to until you get the end result that you're looking for. Mm. So, and also being willing to do the things that may create the result you want, but you don't know because of uncertainty and being willing to do that still. Mm -hmm. So there's actually a story about, I don't know if you've heard this before, but Dave Scott, who was like a master triathlete athlete guy, and he was so determined and disciplined and he did the main things he had to do like train and get sleep and all that but he also was interviewed he would share that he'd rinse his cottage cheese this is a super weird story but he would rinse his cottage cheese to strip the fat off of it just in case that like leanness of it (laughs) gave him a slight edge in his performance so he was willing to do something that like you don't really know if that played a role in his (laughs) end goal but he was willing to do it just because he had that willingness to take massive action and do what it takes or whatever is required. And then the third thing I think that's important with leadership is being coachable. So again, this comes back to being adaptable. Like, are you able to understand that your thoughts create your actions, create your results? And it's the same thing for your community and understanding that for them too allows you to hold more space. So I think not only, like, I just find that asking powerful questions, holding space. A lot of that has to do with coaching, but at the same time, also just understanding that a lot of times our lenses and the way we see things is shaping our results and being able to look at what might be doing that for you that maybe we need to explore or change to improve what kind of result you're looking for. I love it. Yeah. Wow. So just to reiterate, so everyone's got it, it was asking powerful questions, taking massive action, but not necessarily working yourself to the bone, rather taking the the next big step, the right next big step and refining along the way and being willing to fail yes. and being coachable. I love it. Amazing. I think coaching is one of the most, and it's funny that two coaches are having this conversation. I think coaching is one of the most underappreciated skills of humanity. Whoa. Yeah, I would agree. I think it's, I mean, it's changed my life and I am very grateful to know. And I feel like it's like, once you know that you're, at least I believe that your thoughts create your feelings, create your actions, create your results. Once you know that it's like, oh, it, you feel like you can figure anything out. You feel yeah. this almost invincibility, like, and yeah, you know, there will be maybe circumstances you can't control, but you sure, just are on a whole new level when you understand that. Yeah. Um, Shaman Jarek says, if every single word that I speak is a spell that's going to become reality, I have to be really careful about what I say. Mm, yeah. <laughs> your thoughts, create your feelings, create your actions, create your results. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Amazing. Um, Has anybody ever asked you specifically directly to ask powerful questions? Anybody asked me to ask powerful, what do you mean? Like giving me a really good question before? So like you're in the process of leading something. Mm-hmm. And somebody invites you to review your own work. That would be asking you to ask a powerful question. Or they're leading something and they ask you to tell them the hard thing. 
Oh, yeah. Well, I've definitely had um, times where I've told the clients the hard things, <laughs> but I've also been told the hard things by my mentor. So, mm. for example, I have a mentor who um, allowed me to get out of a rut that I was in in my business because he said, imagine you were just totally reinventing this from complete scratch. You know, you didn't have the audience you have. You didn't have any experience that you've already had. You're just starting from complete scratch. What would you choose to bring back in? Oh. Or what would you choose to just restart completely? Cool question. It was a really powerful question. Yeah. And I think also a really powerful question to ask yourself is with whatever goal you're trying to achieve or you know, new thing you're working on, ask yourself, what are your buts? Like, so yeah, that, you know, I can do that, but first I got to finish blah, 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 or, but blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the but, what comes after the but is the stuff you have to work on. And the last thing I would say is a lot of times the things, so there's concept of limiting beliefs. A lot of us have ones that we know about ourselves that mm. are limiting. But oftentimes the ones that are the most limiting are the ones that you don't even know, like you just think they're fact and you've been living like they're fact your whole life and you don't even question them at all. So having an outside perspective and somebody who can ask you those powerful questions to help you realize, wait, oh, I just thought that was my identity. <laughs> what are you talking about? Or I just thought that's how it works. So having that outside perspective and somebody who can ask you those powerful questions is really key because there's stuff I probably, you know, through my coaching and through working with coaches, there have been things where I'm like, oh, like I didn't even know that was possible. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, Yeah, I love that. One of the things that I say over and over again is you just can't see your own stuff. You can't see your own stuff. And you have to have people in your life, whether they're a coach or a mentor or a, a therapist or a best friend, a, who loves you and supports you and also helps you see your own stuff. Mm -hmm. You gotta have people that just point out that, you know, you're doing that thing. What do you mean yeah. I'm doing that thing? No, you're doing that thing. Mm -hmm. Go watch the videotape again. You're gonna see it, you're doing that thing. I can't tell you how many times I've heard it. Like even just like that, you're doing that thing, Lucas. What do you mean? That, tell me what that thing is. No, you're, you'll see it, go watch the video. And then you do and you're like, how have I not seen this before? Yep, totally. Oh my gosh. Watching yep. yourself back and videos and stuff, side note, is, can be so painful sometimes. It's hard. Like, oh, oh, did I really sound like that? Oops. But but again, you got to have somebody point it out. Otherwise, you just, you're not ready to see it, right? Yeah. Exactly. Not always. You, you'll see stuff. But, but when somebody's like, Lucas, you're doing that thing. Awesome. Thank you, Haley. Yeah. I like to wrap up my interviews with three questions. The first is for the people who are inspired by you and, and can't stand not knowing you for another minute, and I'm hoping there are a bunch of them because you're pretty cool. What's the one best way for them to reach you? Yes, yeah, so you can reach me on Instagram at Haley underscore Row H-A-I-L-E-Y underscore R-W-E, the Marketing Hub Facebook group, the Health Coach Nation podcast, and HaleyRow.com. Awesome. Next one. What's the one question that you wish I had asked but have not yet? Ooh, that is a very good question. It was asked to me once and I was like, oh crap, I gotta use that. Oh my goodness. Um, I would say, what do you think is required to make it as an entrepreneur? And the mm. thing that I would say is going back to where we were talking about uncertainty. I think the bi biggest thing I see that trips people up and holds people back is they are thinking that, oh, well, I don't wanna waste my effort and waste my time on trying this one thing or yeah. taking an action. And I need to know that this thing that I'm gonna do is going to pay off in this way. And otherwise mm. I'm not gonna do it. And to me, do that all the time and i think that it's such a killer because yeah you can take estimated logical guesses don't just you know do something sporadically of course but the people who succeed have been willing to take the action and bring the same enthusiasm whether or not it works and learn from it 
compared to being so worried about failing or wasting it mm-hmm. and, and then not doing it at all and rejecting themselves ahead of time. And the truth is either way right now, whatever, if you're in inaction because you're afraid to take action, that's the wrong action. Or if you're taking action and it ends up being the wrong action, the second option, you get further because you learn from it and can change it and adapt and learn what to refine. But the reason why I think so many people are afraid of that is because they beat themselves up if that happens. And they are afraid of the mental beat down that's gonna come versus if they stay in inaction, they have nothing to beat themselves up about. But my suggestion is stop doing that (laughs) and take the action and find out and then be like a scientist and look at what didn't work, et cetera. No need to attach extra emotional drama to that. Just knowing that's part of the game and it's all a game. That's the other thing. I'd say see it all as a game because it makes it much less harsh and serious and, you know, like you're going to beat yourself up and less heavy when you just see it all as a game. That's great. If you choose not to choose, you're still making a choice. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. I saw a quote yesterday, side note, that said, oh my gosh, what did it say? It's like, Most of us think we're fighting demons when really we're just fighting the consequences of our own choices. And I was like, oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that hits, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) How many times have you and I seen that message and not been ready for it, not let it hit? (laughs) Yeah. Right? Ah, amazing. Thank you. Last question. Do you have any final thoughts? Final thoughts. I got to say, this is a different flavor of podcast interviews that I've done. Most of the time I'm teaching, I'm, you know, giving tangible takeaways. And I think this one was really cool because it was more philosophical, (laughs) which is something my brain's not used to because I've gotten so, you know, into the interview world of like, okay, you need to come and teach this topic or whatever. So it was a nice change of pace. And I would say for anybody listening, you know, I hope that it helped you in some way, shape or form. And yeah, it was a fun change of pace. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And thank you for joining me, Haley. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining us this week on Elements of Community. Make sure to visit our website, elementsofcommunity.us, where you can subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, or via RSS, so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes, or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. Be sure to tune in next week for our next episode.